helping creators navigate the waters of podcasting. Welcome to the Podcast Cadet Training Series, where we simplify the world of podcasting with techniques and advice from professionals across the podcasting industry. everybody and welcome to the podcast cadet training series i am chris jordan your host today i am so so excited to have our guest wayne sutton on wayne sutton is the host of the how to sell your coaching podcast he's also the owner of how to sell your coaching.com as well as prosperity with wayne.com or at prosperity with Wayne dot click dot com um and you know you may be asking like why is Chris bringing a life and success coach onto a podcast training series? Um, I'm bringing him on early in the series because I think it's really important for people to understand motivation, for people to understand the, the small business mindset that you really have to have when you're starting any kind of podcast, if you intend to monetize it, if you intend to grow it beyond, beyond a free platform, if you intend to sell t-shirts koozies i don't care um there really is a different switch that you have to turn on in your brain and start that from the get-go you know uh to because to go back and redo it later really kind of puts a whole kink in the real system so um that was one of the reasons as well as the concept of pod fizzle that is out there you know there are platforms like anchor nothing against them um, there are numerous platforms out there where we're ne- whenever you find a show that you like come episode 10, uh, there's no more episodes. And you're like, hey, wait a minute. I kind of liked that. Well, the issue is people really get to a point where they're like, man, this is a lot of work. And unless you're somebody who is maybe podcasting for business and you're using it as an advertising expense, um, which if you aren't, <laughs> we'll get into that, too. Um, but it's. It's interesting to sit and talk about these things with folks like this because this is what they do. They motivate people to move to the next level in their life where it's like, okay, so you like bacon brownies and you seem to do it 15 hours a week regardless of if you have a full-time job. You thought about just making brownies? Um, Because if you love doing it and you hate typing for a living, maybe we should talk about that. Uh, so... Right after this commercial from, well, guess what? Podcastcadet.com. Uh, we will be talking to our guest, Wayne Sutton, owner of how to sell your coaching.com and host of the how to sell your coaching podcast right after this. Have you considered starting a podcast looking for a way to make your business a voice of authority in an industry? then Podcast Cadet is the solution for you. Whether starting a podcast for yourself, your brand, business, school, church, or just plain fun, Podcast Cadet is here to help you navigate the waters of the podcast industry. Specializing in one-on-one consultation and training with industry professionals in fields ranging from podcast technology and editing to distribution, monetization, and even social media strategies. Podcast Cadet tailors their services to the specific needs of you and your podcast. Do you already have a podcast and trying to find ways to engage and grow your audience? Sign up for your Podcast Cadet audit today and let us help you explore new and exciting ways to leverage your content and elevate your podcast brand to whole new levels. From consultation workshops to affordable podcast production and maintenance packages, Podcast Cadet is your one-stop shop for everything podcast-related on the Internet. Visit podcastcadet.com today to sign up for your consultation or training. That website, again, is podcastcadet.com. I'm, I'm so happy to welcome our guest today. Wayne Sutton is... A life coach, success coach, former minister, host of the How to Sell Your Coaching podcast, as well as owner of How to Sell Your Coaching dot com. Um, Wayne, like I told you in the pre-show, 
um, prepare to get shameless because I just did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I mean, it's one of those, uh, if you have a business and you are not leveraging the world, the podcast, uh, be it being a guest, be it hosting a show to set yourself up as we called it in broadcast as a voice of authority to an audience. Um, you're, you are doing yourself a high and large disservice. Mm. Um, at least in in my professional opinion, I work corporate AV events regularly, and uh, even over the last decade, uh, have seen it to where, much like the one yesterday that we closed out, um, beginning of the day, first hour was a podcast from the company that was hosting the event. Like, that is, that is what we played out to the live stream, was last week's broadcast. Uh, so... Um, and that was a wealth management pod, uh, company, you know? So everybody can leverage the world of podcasting. Even, even you yourself, uh, we met on a platform called Podbooker where people go, whether they're a podcaster yeah. or not, to hook up with podcasters, to go and guest on their show to talk about their business, things like that. Yeah. And, and so I'm, I'm so glad to be able to get in here and share, um, Podcasting for me has it has changed not just the way I see business; it changed how I do business, and um, it's just an integral part of of that. Without podcasting, I wouldn't have the business I have, nor be able to help the people that I help. So yeah. I'm, I'm very uh, thankful for, for for people and companies like you that are helping bring some professionalism to a business or uh, professionalism to this this area of business should i say yeah because it, it, it for a long time podcasting and it still kind of is the fact of whenever you mention podcasts some people in the room go pod what um <laughs> and the way i explain it to folks is imagine having a talk radio show about any niche topic that you want to talk about mm. and it's in your yeah. pocket it's on your mobile device it's on your computer you know um and it it really has become even even still knowing folks in broadcast and seeing the broadcast trends uh the fact that we have stolen their audience we have stolen their <laughs> advertising space it used to be that uh radio am radio talk radio things like that for some businesses were specific it, it was the best ad dollar that you could get Straight up. Right. Um, yeah. and, and best return for your ad dollar that you could get. And it is fastly turning the fact that podcasting has become that. Uh, because, mm. because it really is drilled down into a niche audience. You know, um, I have podcasts on my network that are, that are literally just about horror, you know, um, so comic book shops, all kinds of stuff like you can the fact that you can take your podcast and market it to so many different types of niche sponsors uh, sets you mm -hmm. up business wise in a whole new way. It really does. And something you just said there, I think uh, when you look at getting into that niche, really targeted people then sponsorship becomes not mm -hmm. only easier, but more profitable as well. I don't have sponsors on my podcast per se. Sure. Um, I am sponsoring me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sponsoring what we offer, but I have a friend who has a, a relatively small podcast and, but it's very niche and he charges a very, very lucrative um, amount for every show because it's very niche and the people that are in this industry spend money in this industry. So yeah. it's not how many downloads It's how many people are we going to hear about your product, your service? Well, so. yeah. And it's quite literally almost the fact uh, more of how many people do you reach on social media? How many people do you engage mm -hmm. in that way? Um, I just had a sponsor come on for two of the shows on my network a CBD sponsor. They were looking for lifestyle type shows, uh, shows that were about like general wellness, well being, personal well being. Uh, and it, you know, I want to say 
I want to say we charge something like a hundred bucks for a thirty second on air drop. You know. Uh, yeah. per episode. Uh, and so we make it extraordinarily affordable for local businesses where if you know local businesses, mm-hmm. you can go to them and be like, Hey man, for a hundred bucks, like you'll get four episodes a month of a 30 second commercial on my show. Um, and that play, yeah. that play, that pays for people's platforms, for people's social media ads for them, all kinds of stuff. And, yeah, whereas they may only get garner 1,500, 2,000 downloads a month, um, they're garnering 500 unique visits to their website a month. They are connecting with, uh, I want to say one of them has like 3,500 Twitter followers that are active. They have like 500 yeah. followers on their page. Uh, everything goes on to our network page, which has like 3,000 something followers on it. So, yeah, they're getting a pretty decent ad value for a hundred bucks. <laughs> and the fact that it's, it's and, and so I'll pick this up from a, a really good friend of mine that he's a, you know, he does in the podcast industry. And he said, mm. Wayne, what other advertising platform? Can you, you know, I've listened to episode 43 of Cat Lovers podcast. I don't, but I'm just saying, and uh, yeah. I'm like, I really like this. Let me go back and binge from, you know, episode one. And now the episode one is promoting this cat food or whatever. I, I mean, you know, you yeah. an example. How many years will that stay out there? And where else can Facebook ads are gone within a moment they scroll past it? Everything else is such a short shelf life. Yeah. Except podcasting, because yeah. I'd go back and listen to podcasts years ago. So uh, yeah. sponsorship is very important there, especially when you're sponsoring um, something that's closely related to that niche. Sure. And, uh, you know, granted, uh, there are a lot of pop culture podcasts out there, things like that. Those may not be so evergreen as it's called content wise mm-hmm. on the Internet. Yeah. Um, uh, like prime example. Google looks for evergreen content and they will pump evergreen content to the top of search engines uh, in the same niche before they pump up like specifically topical stuff that, you know, like movies from the 1980s. Um, If you're talking about filmmaking, period, uh, you're going to be boosted to boosted up higher. Because you've got what's called evergreen content. Doesn't matter if you listen to that in 1982 or in 2028, <laughs> there's still going to be concepts mm-hmm. that apply. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, speaking of concepts that apply, speaking of concepts that are evergreen, Wayne, um, I, like I said, I'm so glad to have someone like you on to come on and talk about motivation. Um, even myself as a network owner, the host of including this three podcasts, um, it's hard to be motivated, man. It's hard to keep moving, you know, and to keep plugging along, uh, despite successes, despite failures and having someone like you in your corner, having someone like you that someone can turn to talk to, uh, is so, so utterly important to get these lessons from someone else, I think. Um, Let's talk a little bit about uh, coaching, about, you know, wealth building, success building in that right, and how it kind of relates to the concept of pod fizzle. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I think number one is if we look at motivation as – how do I get myself up? How do I get myself in this mental state? We're going to have days that are great and days that are not great. That's just reality. Did you sleep well last night? Uh, yeah. Is the barometric pressure hurting your left knee because of arthritis? So, I mean, in reality, I joke about that, but we cannot hope every day is going to be great. So what we can do is set an agenda. And that agenda is, whether I feel like it or do not feel like it, this is my agenda for tomorrow. Maybe just record the podcast, edit the podcast, find someone to interview or be interviewed. And so when our agenda is there every day, then we're more willing to do it. But also having that internal and external motivation at the same time. For example, Pod Fizzle, and I've recorded seven podcasts. I didn't get rich. I don't only think my grandmother listened to it. 
why am I doing this? And they disappear. But if you said, hey, I'm going to do this until this happens. You know, I'm going to do this podcast every day regardless, or I'm going to do this podcast every week regardless, or until I reach 100 coaching clients, for example, or 100, you know, 1,000 downloads per show so I can receive this kind of sponsorship. Whatever that outward motivation is, but motivation will fail you, willpower will fail you, and agenda will not. I always, let me give you, I'll break it real simple. I always brush my teeth. When I wake up and before I go to bed, and sometimes even between, but I always brush my teeth. It doesn't matter how bad I feel, how sleepy, because that's a simple agenda. And it may sound so simple, but if we can do that, then we can do anything. It's just attaching an agenda to it instead of, I should. You know, Tony Robbins says, turn your shoulds into a must, and you'll be surprised at what you can accomplish. And that is so entirely true. I tell people um, whenever I give them a consultation with Podcast Cadet, the fact of write it down on a schedule, um, mm, write yeah. it down on a calendar. Like by this date, we're going to have an intro written, you know, because um, yes. un- until it's on a calendar staring you in the face that you go up and put an X on every day. Uh, it's just a concept and you can let a concept go. Not going to yeah, hurt you. It's not, it's, it's not a personal failure, you know, that, that, you know, you had a goal and you didn't set, you didn't keep it. Um, it's yeah. so much easier to let it go and to let it go by the wayside. So when it's, when it's staring you in the face on the daily, it's a little bit harder. Mm. Yeah. And so having that agenda, for me, for me, when it comes to this podcast, what's my what's my long term goal? Well, you know, if everything in life should have an outcome, and if I have a long term goal, a long term plan, then I'll do what's necessary to make that a reality. Yeah. If life is hard, things are tough. But I need to get this podcast out. What's the point of my podcast is really to help coaches, consultants, course creators, et cetera, learn some tips and tricks, learn what it takes to be successful. And um, so I found a pain point. Most most coaches in reality are unsuccessful. If you look at statistics, most coaches never make six figures per year and can do Mm -hmm. it full time. I know their pain point. Can I bring a solution through five, 10, 30 minute podcast shows, I can at least give hope and inspiration and a few tips yeah. that ultimately lead back to clients. So, yeah. And that, that I think is so important. Like you said, to, to be able to kind of walk people through the process, uh, because it can be overwhelming, yeah. whether, whether you're starting a podcast or whether you're starting your own business and, and that like, like what you do, where where you're basically trying to help people break that mental mold that so many live in. Um, even recently, mm-hmm. over the last year with COVID, uh, was a prime example with my industry. I'm I'm normally out traveling the country 35, 40 weeks a year, uh, running live conferences, the, the kind of things that you go out and speak on stage at. I'm the guy that you come and bring your PowerPoint to backstage and I put a microphone (laughs) on you and go, okay, now this is live. I'll take you live when you hit stage. Trust me. Okay, buddy. Um, That's me. That's what I do. You know, the, Mm -hmm. the the guy with the God buttons in the back. Um, And yeah, uh, the example that I've given over the last year is that, a lot of us guys uh, who are freelance that do this, we get paid on a 30-day, 45-day cycle, you know? So you either get used to just making it and then having a really big influx, then having to just squeak by again <laughs> because of the cycle of bills and the cycle of pay. You know, they kind of overlap. Right. Um and I had just gotten to the point personally where those two synced up, 
after three years of being on the road and not being here locally with people that paid on a regular schedule, all that kind of stuff. Um, and it was like, imagine how many guys out there after three months of not having our industry, uh, those, those last checks that may be coming in at 60 days have already been spent on bills. A lot of them don't have a lot of savings. Um, how many of them are going to go out and have to get a part-time or full-time job to make ends meet? And how many people who have been in this industry for 15, 20 years, uh, and love it and are amazing at it? Will we lose? Hmm, because, question. because they aren't a malleable person, because they don't know how to take another skill set that they have and make it marketable. Um, and once they, once they get into that cycle of going out and delivering favor and it pays their bills every day, how easy is it going to be for them to once again bravely step forward and go, I don't want to live in that cycle. I want to be freelance again. Yeah. Yeah. And be able to go so, 30 days without a paycheck. Which is, which is back to business 101. And really what I mean by that is if I work with coaches, mm. consultants, I work with course creators, I work with real estate agents, loan officers, I mean, yep. a number of different areas in coaching. And the ones that succeed have really harnessed, I don't think they need to go get an MBA to run a business, but I think they, the basics of business, the basics of showing up, doing the right things, understanding profit and loss, understanding marketing is so important. If you're doing, if you're running Coca-Cola, you're running a podcast. It's a business. And yep. when you get business mindset, it can still be a hobby. It can still be fun, should I say, but is it a hobby or is it a business? And that'll make the biggest difference. Amen. Because, I mean, uh, myself, I, I was just joking with somebody yesterday who I've, I, like I told you before the show, former youth minister, things like that. He was actually a kid who was in the youth group. Uh, he was directing the show that I was there running graphics for. <laughs> <laughs> and we were just laughing yeah. about that, you know. Um, but it was one of those, like, being able to step back, being able to let somebody else take lead on certain things, um, I think yeah. is important. You know, like, uh, there are some people who maybe are not the best quote producer in the world, but they have other skill sets, you know? Um, yeah. and, yeah. and it really is important to recognize those, to hone those and to, like like what you do, let people realize that there is another path that maybe you haven't focused on this facet of the gym, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And when it comes to when it comes to let's, again back to business or mm. a podcast or monetization, it's kind of it's back to why am I doing this every day? Yeah. Why is this something I'm choosing to do? And then back to your business, but being willing to have somebody to go, hey, I need help with this. Yep. Uh, am I going to do this podcast myself or am I going to go to a professional and make sure it's done properly? And I tell all of my coaches, recognize your superpower and you want to amplify that. And you want to, you want to work from that superpower. Yeah. But also understand your weakness. Superman, well, Clark Kent was Superman. Clark Kent did not go... And, and become a gemologist working with kryptonite. It would, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. You know, be, <laughs> be who you are and outsource the other part. That's outsource right. Outsource it and your, your strength will come in. People ask me, Wayne, why do you have virtual assistants? Why do you have, I have local and virtual assistants. Why do you do this? Um, and like, because when I'm at sl I'm sleeping tonight, I'm resting, I'm yeah. here with my family they're they're doing their magic. That's right. Their superpower. That's right. Um, then my job is to bring it through the podcast and to attract and to connect and just to be there for people. Yeah. When they need that one on one help. Well, yeah, precisely. And it it's it's so important. Um, and uh, that brings us to our next topic, which is uh, which is that selfish aspect. Because it, it really is the fact, I say it on job site all the time, the day I start working for a living, I'm going to quit. 
<laughs> the day I start working yeah, again, because yeah. like I've had jobs, man. I've busted tires. I've changed oil. I've cooked in kitchens. You know, I've I've scrubbed dumpsters as part of my job for a living. Uh, so you yeah. know, and I live in Texas. That's not fun. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, the day I start working for a living again, I'm done. I'm, I'm walking, uh, because I love what I do every day. Like, uh, people, yeah, people yeah. here that are watching the video can see the racks of gear behind me. If I'm not out wiring equipment on job site, I'm doing it here at home, you know, because I mm. love it. It's my passion. I, I, instead of counting sheep, I build racks of equipment in my sleep. Like that, that's how I go to sleep to relax and calm down instead of counting sheep as I, I build racks and wire them like, like yeah. Zen in the art of motorcycle maintenance. So, um, yeah, like you yeah. were just saying with, uh, if you know how to do all this stuff, Wayne, why aren't you doing it? Uh, well, because you have a wife, you have children, you love them and selfish you, you want to spend time with them. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the most important when one of the things you can do in starting any business for our you know, fellow podcasters, recognize an essentialism. And essentialism is really what's truly essential that, again, back to the superpower. What can you do? What can you not? Or what shouldn't you be doing? I was one of the first ones to go, well, if I turn it over to an assistant, if I hire a coach, if I turn it over to a, you know, a director, it may not be done the way I want it to be, or they don't know what I know. And that was just actually pride and arrogance. Because what I realized was my assistant in the Philippines knows a lot more about SEO and a lot more about analytics than I do. Yeah. And I realized my assistant here locally knows a lot more about the the systems and operations and processes and then accounting. And I'm like, wait a minute. You know, it's an, just an epiphany to hire someone smarter than you. Yeah. And you have to let go of pride to do that. But if you do, then you can shine because yes. they make you shine. And a prime and, example of that is, is literally Steve Jobs. Steve, mm, Job, yes. Steve Jobs did not program computers. He did not build computers. He came up with concepts and he surrounded himself with people with the skill sets to do it. Yes. Yes. And people, and a lot of those people would never be known Steve will. And it's not about just, Hey, again, I'm known I'm, I'm the no. person, but it's how quick do you want to make, how quick do you want your show, your podcast? And, and I think that's a question I ask myself. In fact, I had someone tell me, Wayne, your podcast is very, very niche. It's only for coaches. Yes, because that's who I enjoy working with every day. Yeah. That's who I enjoy working with. And so I want it to be very clear, very informative. And um, if, somebody's, if somebody's looking for a podcast and they're not a coach, they're probably not going to click on mine. And that's okay for me. Yeah. So... Yeah. Yeah. It, and, you know, it really is that concept of I'm OK with everybody in the world not listening to my show, um, even <laughs> even talking sound like I've I've got dudes and beer and that, you know, we have a lot of deep topics on that. Like I just I just talked to somebody about UFOs in the Bible the other night. Uh, super fun. Oh, Much more. Me and a, you could talk on that. My, my, me and you could talk my, on that a lot. <laughs> oh, it was, it was, yeah. uh, I was, I was giddy the whole time. Let's just say it was super fun. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, and that's much more of an every guy show. Like when I was out on job site talking about it the other day, like 20 dudes were like, Dude, I'm tuning into that one next week. Um, but at the same time, I've got talking sound, which is all about the AV industry. Uh, that is nowhere near as large of an audience yeah. or as large as a listenership, uh, but it's much more of a devoted listenership mm, because, yeah, yeah. because it's people that are listening to like, uh, you know, the keyboardist from night Ranger talk about how he used to tour with jam bands, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, that's audio engineer nerd out is what that is. Um, <laughs> that's not every single person, <laughs> you know? So yeah, like you yeah. said, to, to know that you are focusing specifically on coaches and that's all you're trying to reach and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yes, absolutely. Well, and I think that goes right into the the concept of get out of your own way. Mm. Uh, that's that yeah. is that has been a, a little piece of paper that I keep on the back of my studio door for the longest time, so that as I'm on my way out to things, uh, to go out and lead a crew, things like that. Get out of my own way. The success of the show depends on the whole crew, not just on me, the crew lead. Um, I need to trust the fact that the video engineer, uh, like, I can just go, there's your gear, and walk away. Because that's what mm-hmm. I'm supposed to yeah. do, um, is get out of their way and let them do their job. Much like you said, the SEO guy in the Philippines knows a heck of a lot more than you do about writing a really good half-page post. For Google. Yes, yes. And not only do they know more, but just the fact that you can buy back your time, mm. that you can invest in other things, that you can spend, as, you know, for me, I love to spend it with family yeah. uh, or my church. But, you know, I, and now I've got that time where before I thought I had to do it all. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, yeah. it's so important. I mean, even uh, that's something that I have been learning over the last couple of years is to schedule things. And, and just recently, uh, did I get to the point I was, I was making a to-do list on my tablet, you know, just movie in the background, my wife working on her computer. Um, and I got up, came to the studio for a few minutes and came back and looked at my list to continue it. And I was like, man, no wonder I can, I can not chop this tree down look at look at how sporadic my axe marks are (laughs) um i had Mm. i had stuff for podcast cadet at the top followed by my musical act followed by this podcast followed by av stuff and then then podcast cadet again and it was like i can't even make a to-do list with everything grouped together yeah that's my problem that's where well, right, and that's where essentialism, it's a great book, and I don't, anybody can Amazon, Google, I don't mm-hmm. remember the name of the author, but great book. And, and the book really helped me, and, and every client that I bring on now, every client gets a copy of the book. And I'm like, read nice. the book, here's a, and, and read the book and, and follow these exercises before we work any further, because we're, otherwise I'm pushing a rock yeah. uphill instead of downhill. I'd prefer to push it downhill. So it goes back to essentialism. And, and then if somebody, as you said, pod puzzle, if you're going to do something, why are you doing it? What's that inward motivation, outward motivation? And then the more, more importantly, make it part of an agenda where you do it regardless. And unless someone has died in your family, then you need to be doing, get the podcast out. Yeah. And it's, it's, and then because consistency shows a lot for somebody, a, a number of podcasts, as you said, I've listened to four episodes and then, Oh, well, that was I listened to it three years ago. <laughs> so, you get an applause for that one. Uh, Cause yeah, thank cons- you, thank you. consistency is yeah. where it's at, man. Like I have literally, uh, even this last Thanksgiving, this last Thanksgiving, I was out doing st- like recording while I was cooking. I have done dudes and beer live while I fry a turkey. Not even joking. Yeah, I went live. Yeah, with, so- I went live with dads and beer whenever I had it from from the waiting room to go into the delivery room. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, you, you win. You win. That's dedication. You win. Um, it is, and, for, and, and so one thing about dedication too is it is a it is like building a muscle. You mm. may think, well, I'm not dedicated. That's not me. Most people aren't until you do it every day. Yeah. Most people until you train yourself, brush your teeth every day, record the podcast. Take that next step. Read ten pages of a book. Whatever your day looks like, make it part of that daily activity. That's it. So that because you have a, a people that need to hear this podcast. Whoever you, you know, you have people that need what you have. And and as I said, once you build it up in that niche and you start getting that sponsorship, wow, how fun is it to get paid to do what you love to do? 
Yeah. Yeah. Precisely. Precisely. And it's so great to talk to people like you. Even right now, the tips of my fingers are tingling. Uh, my, my, I've got, <laughs> I've got to drive to Dallas for a few hours and I know that I'm literally just going to have the microphone in my car on. Um, and just, mm. just rattling off ideas, uh, to transcribe later, uh, because it, awesome. it just, it literally gets my brain going. Um, how can I help other people figure out what, what you're saying? How can I, how can I help make the message more clear? You know, uh, even, even an episode that I'm getting ready to do with Todd Cochran from Blueberry is, one that we talk with people in social media groups all about, he and I, which is, good God, own your URL. Quit giving mm -hmm. away your branding and your SEO to free platforms. If you're looking at ever doing this as a business, if you're looking at ever selling anything or, you know, uh, using using it to promote your business... You need to be going from your stuff to begin with. Like it just happened where uh, Podbean was held captive through DDO, DDoS attack, all kinds of stuff. So, um, yeah, mm. it's it's one of those. It, it's a good point. You know, you you really do have to start thinking about it with a business frame of mind from the get go. If you're, if you, yeah. and hey, I, I have consulted people who have just wanted to do a good show about fun. They want to have no sponsors. They don't care. You know, um, right. I have consulted both sides of the fence. Um, but most people eventually are like, yeah, how do I get sponsors, Chris? You know, and it's like, well, you need to think about that from day one. Uh, about how you were branding mm -hmm. your show, about how you are getting it out there. You know, um, are you leaving a space for sponsorship? For instance, like, like you and I, this show and your show, like you said, you, you were the sponsor of your show. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm shameless in that right as well. I am the sponsor of this show. Sure. You know, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a different world once you start thinking about that. Now, uh, before we let you go here, because I know we've got about another 15 minutes or so with you. Um, what what advice are you normally giving people that are looking to step out into the world on their own? The, 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 the first three things to do if they are looking to become freelance, to, to break that, I guess really the only way I can put it is quote chain of oppression because <laughs> mm. <laughs> i mean no, i don't know it, you said it. i i have not had a a three-letter job in 20 years i have hacked my way yeah. through the jungle like indiana jones with a halfway sharp machete just <laughs> going i see the top of a temple over there and i am just i am going like I will so not be I'll deterred. Give you, I'll give you so. Yeah, uh, I'll give you. I'll give you a couple. My thoughts on that for mm. somebody who wants to go and and take. Yeah, the Indiana Jones go and take. <laughs> it really goes back to, um, for time's sake, I'll try to keep it real simple. It is is first have a clear outcome, and it, this is something that needs to be a vivid vision, a real vivid vision. Where do you want yourself to be? two, three years from now. Yes. 20 years sounds great. 10 years sounds great. But, you know, lots of things can happen. But two to three years from now, where do you want yourself to be? This needs to be a vivid vision of where are you earning the income? Where are you living? Who are you living with? Uh, you know, everything that really needs to be vivid. Do you have a fluffy dog or a fluffy cat? What do you have in your life? Mm. Because that vivid vision will do two things. It'll move you forward in motivation. It'll also show you some areas of maybe doubt and unbelief. Like, I would love to have that, but I don't really believe it. So then you can work on that. But an outcome is number one. Number two, you really need to look at the self, the air, your own self in the place of self-sabotage. And self-sabotage is not fun to look at. We want to talk about the vision. But the vivid vision is only good if you can actually get there. And so when we look at self-sabotage, what do you believe about yourself? 
you know, what embedded beliefs, what have people told you, yeah. what have you learned by you? Yeah. Secondly is what do you believe about other people? Are they out to get you? Are they mean? Do they care? Your, your worldview of other people. And then finally, just your worldview of life itself. Do you believe that you were here for a purpose? Do you believe you're here to give and to create? Or you believe oh, this just a crappy world and everybody's heading to hell and life is, you know, we're just damned if you do, damned if you don't. You've really got to have that mindset of how do you see the world? If you can get the outcome and you can really look at the where areas that could be self-sabotaged and work through them each day, my final thing is is really having faith in yourself and your purpose for your place in this earth. Now, I'll speak as the minister for a second. I believe everybody has a divine destiny. Yes. And it doesn't mean everybody's going to accomplish what the world sees as great things. But it could be great to one person. But what is your destiny? Yeah. And you don't have to have, oh, I've been seeking for years, Wayne, still don't know my destiny. It's okay. It's a, it's a journey. But if you were born with a purpose, can you live it out? Can you and can and you'll make a lot of mistakes learning to live it out. I love in the in the in the Bible it says Jesus grew in favor with man and God. He had to, it was Jesus and he had to grow in favor. Yeah. So we grow and we learn. So but for me, find that vivid vision. Look at what is influencing you and what has influenced you. And have some faith in yourself. Who says you can't do it? Yeah. Who says you are not good enough? Give yourself permission if nobody else has. Yeah. And, and, and not just that. Celebrate. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Celebrate as frequently as you can. Like I yeah. post, I made a post the other, I made a post the other day about cuz you know I don't check reviews much um and I, if it's something something came over me the other day I was gathering some stuff for my wife's podcast and I was like oh let me go to her iTunes and gather some reviews and I was like you know man I haven't checked dudes and beer reviews in a long time and there was one that was this stellar review like what, and I had had somebody on talking about ibogaine for treatment for addiction, all kinds of things. Um, and this guy was like, I've heard numerous shows and documentaries talk about ibogaine, but I have never heard anybody talk about this topic in this way. This was so absolutely fantastic and amazing. And it was a one star review. <laughs> oh my goodness and I, yeah. just, I had to celebrate the fact that i got a one-star review like best one-star review ever you know um yeah, and i posted yeah. i posted it up all post. over yeah, yeah like all yeah. over yeah exactly right all all over groups you know um and it really is the fact of a you got to be willing to laugh at yourself um and B, you really do, it's as seriously as you take yourself. Mm. You know, um, yeah. just like when I worked with bands, I used to tell them, you are as big as you believe you are, guys. Mm. And if you, yeah. and if you work yeah. that way, um, and work that way, work that way. Like when you come into the studio, work that way. When you come onto stage, work that way. Um, when I, when I, I have a live light outside of my studio here because when I push that button, it's a switch that goes on in my head. Um, doesn't matter That's what good. I've done That's throughout good. the rest of the day. When I push that button, it's, it's the same as whenever I used to do it on air. You know, whenever I hit the on air button and our feed took over broadcast, um, it's go time, man. There is, you you got to take whatever happens. You got to roll with the punches and just let it go because there may not yeah. be much you can do about it. You could beat yourself up or you could just move forward um, and use it. Yeah, as and what you're doing experience. there, what you're doing there is setting an anchor. You're setting yeah. a state. Tony, you know, Tony Robbins talks a lot about setting anchors, but you're really setting a state when that live light comes on, on air, whatever it is. It's, yeah. This is what I'm focused on now That's fully. Right. When I was into really brief, um, when I was in ministry, there was times when I was looking, I was counseling. There was times when I was cleaning the toilet. There was times when I was, um, you know, ministering from the platform. Yep. I had to fully serve in that role, in that role. It doesn't mean 
you know, I couldn't, I couldn't slack off in one area. Yeah. Um, today I do more, I, I don't minister as much from stage, but I do a lot more counseling. When I'm counseling sure. that person, I need to give them everything I have. When you're doing your, as you said, give it all, give it all. Yes, there's situations happening. I'm in my home office. Uh, I have children downstairs. I can barely hear them. Hope you can't. But um, something's <laughs> going on down there. But I have to trust <laughs> that my wife is down there also and everything's okay. Yeah. So like, I'm fully focused here. That's right. And that's the key. If, you, uh, if you're going to be successful in business, you have to get your mindset. And it has to be. Give yourself permission to succeed. That's right. Because the world will give you permission to fail. Yeah, they'll give. It's, they will give okay. you plenty. Yeah. They will let you know plenty if you fail. But try to find one conquering moment a day, man. One a day, where mm. where it was like, yeah. wow, look at this. And I mean, what I had to do to go back to my uh, whole concept of the checklist that I was telling you about. What that brought me to a point of Wayne was realizing that. I have so many irons in the fire because, yeah, I run a live AV company, you know, um, I, I, I run a podcast network. I run a podcast consultancy. I host three shows. Uh, I'm also an active musician uh, with distribution, you know, so it's literally like family is Sunday. Monday is yeah. no disassemble. Yeah. Tuesday is dudes and beer. Wednesday is talking sound. Thursday is podcast cadet friday is hc productions saturday is hc universal and that's a week done um but the fact mm. is unless i do that then i start working on a talking sound website at the same time that i'm working on dudes and beer and things start yeah. they don't get the focus that they need you know, they don't get the, they don't yeah. get the proper attention. So if I say Monday is nothing but no disassemble, be it coming over here and writing tracks, be it going on and doing social media promo, be it going, going and building a press kit for the new album. Doesn't matter. Um, yeah. unless it's returning an email to someone regarding something, it is nothing but no disassemble. That's all I do. Yeah, that's uh, good. That's so that good. it's so that it's not like a shotgun. It's more like a cohesive laser light, you know. And now we can <laughs> now we can really get some real work done, because uh, shotguns pack a lot of punch, but only for a short distance. That's true. Very you know? good point. And and you really do. Uh, whenever you're looking at things like this, whenever you're looking at business, if you have a short term mindset, you will have a short term business. Um, it's just mm -hmm. that simple. If you are not giving yourself a 10 year goal to reach, um, and putting it down on paper of six months, one year, two year, five year, 10 year, like you're really doing yourself a disservice. You know, uh, how are you looking you to really grow? Are. How are you, how are you looking to get to that next step? And what steps do you have to complete right now? You know, because in, unless you mm -hmm. build that solid base to build off of, um, it's it's just a a rickety framework. Work that's that's the only way to put it. It's really rickety, <laughs> you know. Um, and whether it's a business or whether it's a show, and I see it happen all the time. Where, um, and I have nothing against co-hosts. I have, I have nothing against that concept, but the idea that I have to get into people's heads regularly is remember, that's just like being in a band with three people. That's no different. Mm. And are you going to be upset? Are you going to be personally injured if that person does not put out as many handbills and flyers as you? If they don't do as many social yeah. media posts as you? Are you yeah, setting so yourself Disney, up for a point of failure and disappointment? So it is very true with it. With a, that would be very true with a co-host. It'd also be very true in business in general. Yeah, uh, I have one business. I have one business partner that. Um, and, and here's what I look for in that: if somebody's considering mm. a co-host or sure. somebody's considering. Should I go in business? Number one, you're going to split revenue, so keep that in mind. Number two, <laughs> yeah. Um, but number two is where is your superpower and where is theirs? If you're both really strong in one area, 
that's okay, but it's better if you're really strong in one area that they're not, and that's they're right. really strong in one area you're not. That is rare to find, but if you can find it, somebody that's really good with systems and processes, but you're good with the marketing, and maybe it's a co-host. It's really, it's um, you bring energy into that, but outside of the show, what do you bring? Yeah. And that's where you really got to make sure both of you are in alignment. Well, so, and very good point. That's just it because I mean, uh, and I, like I said, I, 20 years almost in rock and roll. Uh, uh, I, I have so many lessons that I lean on in life with that. And it's still the, still the same, whether it's business, whatever. If you spend one hour in the studio, you need to spend three hours promoting. Yes. Hands Very down, it is a it is Very a one point. to three ratio. As many podcast groups and websites like what you and I met on, Wayne, that I belong to, um, and I even know Daniel Geffen, like the guy that started podcast. He's a book, super pod awesome book. guy. He is an guy. amazing yeah. individual. Um, he's yeah. coming on the show next. Actually, he is my next guest. Um, and it it really is the fact of if. If you're not out there doing this because you love it, um, you need to reconsider that. If you're not out there doing yeah. what you're doing for a living because you love it, you need to reconsider that. Um, because it really does ultimately come down to longevity, happiness, um, being fulfilled yeah. within yourself. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and that's everything if 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 you if that is it you'll you will not have pod fizzle yeah you will not have excuses um i never have to have somebody i don't have to feel in a good mood to love my children yeah yeah i don't have to get in state to love my wife i just do and so if there's a passion behind it then it'll it'll carry over in business as well that's right that's right and it is it is so so important i want to thank you so much uh i know that I just went through the snow apocalypse here in Texas. I want to thank you for rescheduling and taking the time <laughs> out of what Absolutely. I know. I, I do not know uh, a success or business coach out there that is not just like, except for the one day a week that they set aside, you know, um, because that's what you got to do. Uh, except for that, that are just not stacked to the gills. So <laughs> I want to, I want to <laughs> yeah, thank you for coming on the show, taking the time to talk with us, taking the time to talk with the audience about really some of that mindfulness that needs to come into play whenever you're considering starting a show for friends, family, fun, business, church, school, whatever, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, Cause it, it, it really is something that um if it's not what you're what you're wanting to do it can be a drain real quick in a lot of ways yeah so it really can yeah uh give give everybody uh one last one last time shameless self promotion uh let them know where they can go to uh i i see the book uh, Life Coach You as well. Tell them where they can go to get the book Life Coach yeah. You, uh, where they can go to book time with you, uh, Wayne, where they okay. can go to get a hold of you, everything else, because uh, your services are fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. The easiest way to go to howtosellyourcoaching.com. Howtosellyourcoaching.com is really our blog, our podcast, everything is on there. Um I'm one of the, I love this to talk with people. If I can help somebody, great. If I can't, that's fine. So they want to just jump on a call with me. I make it real easy. It's just callwithwayne.com. That'll take you to my appointment calendar. Wow. Let's take 15, 20 minutes to get to know each other. Um, what? It, maybe you're not a coach, not a consultant. But you just want, hey, I want to pick your brain. Uh, let's do that. And if they want to pick up the book, Life Coach You, maybe they are a podcaster by day and a life coach by night or vice versa mm. that you pick up that book at lifecoachlifestyle.com the reason i name it life coach lifestyle or life coach you is it really is about the lifestyle of the coach the good bad and the ugly we don't want to just sugarcoat it so um I, yeah love for people to pick it up i want to say thank you for having me on the show today i love just 
connecting and sharing, and this has been a great, great uh, time for me. Thank Wayne, you. Wayne, I assure you, number one, my friend, this will not be your last appearance on the Podcast Thank Cadet you. Training Series, and it will not be uh, your last appearance on any show that I'm on. I guarantee you we will be talking uh, on a pretty decently regular basis. I would love to feature you on all kinds of stuff because – this is what I try to tell people all the time. Like, had somebody told yeah. me that I could make a li and, and a decent living doing what I did in tech theater in high school for an A, I, my life may have been <laughs> a little bit different after that year in the seminary, man. You know, like I was, yeah, I was yeah, a little totally lost for a little while there. Not that I didn't do some good work, but I definitely wasn't in it to win it for Chris. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. No, I get that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, please do hold the line while we close everything out, and uh, we'll be right back with you. While you're online checking out everything from Wayne Sutton over at HowToSellYourCoaching.com, make sure to stop on by Podcast Cadet. That is where you can sign up for consultancy. That's where you can sign up for podcast audits. That's where you can... Take tech training lessons as well. Uh, we give you one-on-one -on -one time with folks like me who are full-time AV engineers so that you can learn how to make your show sound better, learn how to uh, hook up and integrate the equipment. We do everything from WordPress training to even speaker training, uh, how to how to speak, speak extemporaneously. Stop on by podcastcadet.com today. Uh, Thank you so much once again, Wayne, for taking the time. Until next time, everybody, take care of yourselves, take care of your shows, and keep on podcasting. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Podcast Cadet Training Series. For more episodes and information, follow us online at podcastcadet.com and all major podcast platforms. Join our Podcast Cadet Community Group on Facebook for the latest in podcast industry news and conversation with industry professionals. The Podcast Cadet Training Series is produced in association with HC Productions and the HC Universal Network of Podcasts. For more great episodes and content, or for information about distribution or sponsoring podcasts, visit hcuniversalnetwork.com today. Thanks for listening, and until next time, remember, remember to press, press record. record.